It's autumn term at Daubney Primary School in Hackney, London. Van der Noakes is the school's head teacher and is just starting her second year in the job. In her first year, she overcame conflicts with staff and parents as she worked to make Daubney a successful school. Van der now knows the school's year six SATS results and the scale of her task is starkly clear. From first joining the school, Van der has been closely monitored by the Hackney Learning Trust and this term, the scrutiny will continue. The next months are critical for Vanda. With their Ofsted inspection now overdue and the honeymoon period long forgotten, she needs to show that she has what it takes to lead this challenging school forward. Vanda has just 12 weeks to show results at Daubney or to confront the possibility that the job is too tough. Carry it until you get there. Day one, 8.45 a.m. and the school's teachers are back. Vanda's first meeting with them will explain her objectives for the coming term. This is just typical, the head putting the chairs out and now no, nobody else is here. It has to be a better year than last year. Last year was so tough. And I think tough for me personally, dealing with all those things. There's still a few things to mop up, but... Oh, it would be really nice to be able to concentrate more on the children. It was all adults, adults, it felt, last year. And I'm really hoping this year the children can be the main focus and not all the adults and the staffing problems. That's, that's, my, that's my prayer. I hate it when they do that, so I'm not going to do that. I always swore I'd never just put my hand up like that. Good morning, everybody. It's really lovely to see you all again after our lovely long holiday. And I think we've got a really, really exciting um, year ahead of us. Hope you've, have you all got the inset agenda? <coughs> As Vanda predicted, Daubney's SATS results were well below the national average. She plans to use this evidence of underachievement to motivate her staff to attack standards head-on this term. The literacy was 63% uh, and quite a good percentage of level fives. Maths was 51%, which is what we expected. I mean, obviously poor, and science was 53 again, which is which is poor. <laughs> um, the, the year six SATS results were pretty much what we were expecting. Um, I can't say I was particularly surprised or particularly disappointed, although of course I would have loved them to be a lot higher. But then that's something we can work on for next year. The last thing, and I'll say more about this in our briefings, is that I am 80%, uh, I may be wrong, but I feel about 80% certain that we will have an Ofsted this term. So all of you need to be aware whether your file's up to date, keep really on top of everything. Because we still have a proportion of staff here who took some time to come round to the way of thinking that things weren't quite right, it's just as well for those people to have that sort of Damocles in a way hanging over them. I think it keeps people really um, prepped up, ready in case it happens. I mean, we'll only get two days warning or something. Things like that. With the clock ticking and with the pressure to prove herself, Vanda wants results quickly and expects all her teachers to be on task and on target from day one. You can come in now this September and say, I want this done exactly like this. I haven't got that half a term or term where you're finding out how things go. I want work to start immediately tomorrow. None of this two-week assessing the children and fiddle-faddling around. Everybody should get down to work tomorrow. And for some of them, that, that would be quite hard. We talked about the cross-curricular activities. We're doing our thematic approach through that creative learning journey. We're trying to put in place a new creative we'll pedagogy where that we are teaching in a thematic way, but emphasising the basic skills in maths and English through that. Um, we're still doing four more numeracy units in the morning because the staff aren't quite ready to do the whole, whole thing. Um, and we've chosen Africa as our um, whole school theme this term. We'll have a different one next term and in the summer term. I still feel a bit awestruck when I look at this great big building, even after a year, and think, oh my goodness, another whole year of keeping everything going here. It's a massive task to get a school ready for the start of term. And though Vanda's focus is on her ambitious plans for the future, she needs to remember more everyday problems, like making sure each child has a suitable teacher. And only, um, only two left on long-term sick, so that's a little bit better. Two now, it was three, so, so that's better. But then we've managed to replace one of those with an interview we had on Friday with another NQT. So I've now got five NQTs and one GTP, which is actually much better than what I had last September. Because we can train them in our own way, which is better. The school role is expanding, 
And for the sake of standards, Vanda is determined to keep class sizes small. So at the end of the summer term, she decided to create new classrooms. Classroom is not ready and I'm not ready either. <laughs> And we've got no tables and chairs, but we're going we're gonna to find something for yeah. you today. Yeah, we've got three classes, one without tables and chairs and two without chairs. But I'm not too stressed. So it's year four and then it's Peter. We have to use the red chairs for Peter. And then Possibly Monica, we're just whatever we can find yeah, around the store. just the smallest chairs we've got. Okay. I'm hoping they're going to turn up. Right, well, I'll meet up with you about half past two and we'll decide then. Smash Thank you. Bye. Bye. OK. So 90 chairs we're looking for. I think we've got 30 tables on order. Um, it's just this time of year, unfortunately. Um, basically, first come, first serve with the manufacturers. You place an order in June and cross your fingers and hope they arrive by September. Vanden now knows the children and believes that it is personalised academic and emotional support that will help her to succeed. Vanden's approach is twofold. Teachers will be expected to teach more creatively and use rigorous methods to teach maths and English. She also plans to provide counselling and a nurture group for children with specific needs. Time will tell whether this is enough to bring the education these children deserve to Daubney. The academic stuff will be rolling along and on, on the other side, um, the really exciting thing is the family care team that we've now got the funding for and I think recruiting the support workers for that and getting that really up and running and seeing what effect it has on the vulnerable children and the community that's really very exciting, and I think the mere fact that that's running will help raise the standards. They, they go together. You can't, you can't raise standards without dealing with holistic issues, and, and that's what we'll be doing. So with the inset day over and the teachers primed for a new term, Daubney is ready to open its doors to pupils. Children are often a head teacher's harshest critic. What do they think of Van Den Oaks? She's nice. She's great. She's lovely. She's a little bit strict. She brings like um, people from different, like famous people, like the president and stuff, to our school. No, not she gives us, well, not she gives us um, lots of activities to do after school. She's very interesting. She's very, <laughs> very. You don't know how to explain it. Everyone has commented to me how different the atmosphere is, how, how tangible it is, the change. So I feel very heartened by that, that, that when I took the first assemblies and it's carried on this week, it, it's, they were well behaved before, but it felt more repressed before. Whereas now somebody said to me, I think there's more mutual respect between the children and the adults. So I think the ethos is so different from a year ago that I feel really, really happy about that. I feel now, this year, that it's my school and they're my children. And I think last year was quite hard, particularly with the year sixes, because they hadn't grown up under my leadership, as it were. But already, because I got to know the year fives last year, there's a different relationship with those older children. Yeah, and I feel very much that it's not such a struggle as it was last year. One of the reasons it's not such a struggle is because Vanda has in place key members of staff who are working with her. Vanda's off to see Jackie Goss, the new nursery manager. Always a pleasure to be going into the nursery. You usually want to escape down here. Hello! <laughs> you remind me of that little lady in the house, you know, who comes out when the sun We're shines. Or when it... <laughs> we all look like that, so we all look I the think same. it's lovely. I'm just saying what a pleasure it is. Hello! What are you making? This is very nice, isn't it? I love the little hats they wear here because it stops them getting sand in their hair. Oh, hello. Are we building things here? Are you building something? Do you, do you know who I am? Do you know who this lady is? It's Mrs. Noakes. I've got my list of things that they need. List of things they need? Yeah, resources. I mean, it's nice that, that I think most of the staff feel they can come and say, oh, look, I really need this, I really need this. So, obviously, I'll take this back and show Miriam and walkie-talkies. We want to get them for the whole school. Yeah, we'll have to... Well, we've got pockets of money for things like this. Just no money for staff. Is there enough money? I don't think there's ever enough money if you're a visionary and if you've got incredible ideas and things you want to realise, hence my going to Accenture to get more. I will always be looking for more money. No, and I mean, if you, you go to a really... I went to Christ Hospital School recently because two of our children are applying to go there. 
And it's incredible, the facilities. And I, I thought, why can't my kids have that, you know? Though the school's budget is stretched, Vanda is determined to go ahead with her plans for a nurture group and get it up and running before the end of term. Vanda believes that this class will really help her raise standards. To help realise her ambitions, she has asked for the help of a colleague from Essex. Francine Martin is a Senko experienced with nurture groups. Increase Echo, the school's assistant head, is overseeing teaching in the group, and Anita Charles is the teaching assistant who'll work in the class. They have a lot of children that come in who haven't got the social skills, they haven't had all the, a lot of them haven't been to perhaps play school, nursery schools, they don't know how to relate with other children and I gather that's the main issue here and obviously if you're in a very small setting in a nurture group all those things can be taken care of and then they can go back and be very successful in their own class. If a child's not happy or if a member of staff is not happy then it's, it's very difficult to do, for them to do their job effectively or for the child to do their work effectively. So if, if we work towards, I'm hoping people would, would start to realise that that is the bedrock, that is the foundation. If we work at that, then we'll start seeing progress in other areas. Increase has asked Francine to help identify children who might benefit from the one-to-one -one help available in the nurture group. Going to do ABC? No. It's not going to do ABC for us today. OK, basically, we've chosen Shadrach to join the nurture group because of, of his needs, because he had a very unsettled year last year. Right. Reception, he was quite settled. He lent a lot, make, made a lot of progress. He got into year one, regressed for various reasons. His LSS changed a lot, so routines were not in place for him. He started with someone, got used to them, and then that relationship was broken. So what you're hoping for this year is for him to have a much more settled year to get yeah, organised and to be with his brother. Um, wow. With so many new staff at the school, Vanda is taking every opportunity to train them. She has a surprise in store for one young teacher. This morning, because you can sing and I'm really up to here, I want you and Peter together to lead the assembly. Anne will be playing the piano. He's oh. going to stand right next to you. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to. I'm still... You don't have to sing. I don't always sing, do I? I just start them off and... It's only a couple of songs. Oh. You don't have to sing, you'll be fine. Okay. Good for your career development. Oh, no. Okay. Thank you, Edwina. Vanda has also given more responsibilities to the school support staff. Peter McKindy is a new LSA, employed to offer one-to-one -one support for a child who has problems with his behaviour. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Very brave. I would have cried if that was me. Well done. What a brave boy. Will you join in if you're next to him? He would know he was asked to sit up by, by uh, Miss. Oh, oh, he was asked to sit up. Yeah. Why? What was he doing? Uh, he's been a bit naughty today. Has he? Not settling very well. Nick Clark is in the last term of the graduate teacher programme and is working with his year five class. This lesson is on an African theme a part of Vanda's push to have the whole school teach thematically. Do you think a computer is a need or a want? It's a want, it's a want. Because some people don't have computers and they just, even though they, they could talk and have friends. I could say to you, I need my computer to teach. Yeah, but then you need it, but, but some school, like, if, if like, schools want it, then schools could have it. I know, but could I survive without my computer as a teacher? No. Yes, my second term. Um, it's a very steep learning curve, I'm sure everyone says that. And I think, because uh, I've got an excellent uh, teaching assistant, we're slowly getting there and uh, behaviours are improving and they're now putting in more, more effort, which is quite rewarding in a way. that I asked Edwina as an NQT to cover. Is Peter next to her? I couldn't see. So she's standing there on her own, and then you go in and film her, and I thought, what empowerment for her, though? She's going to be so proud of herself after she's done that. Plus, I'm thinking, I do this every week. I don't need to do it. She's a very good singer.
Elsewhere in the school, Dave and Ray, the caretakers, are busy building Hackney's first nurture group. Vanda has no budget for this project, but is going ahead anyway, as she believes it is essential for her school. At the moment, as you can see, it's a total different changeover to what you saw the last time you came in. The concept of having a kitchen um, in a nurture group is to um, give the children that security of being at home and being able to show them how to cook. From her very first days as head at the school, Vanda has been concerned about poor security. They now have the funds to build a secure reception for the school, which also means that Vanda will get an office. So this is where um, we're going to have our new reception area. I waited a year, so it's so wonderful. And you can see we've got no, not very good security here, so we will have a, we've just got £7,000 towards a new security door, so there will be a proper secure entrance into the school. So it'll not only make all our lives easier, the admin and myself, but it'll be much safer for the children. Just before half term, Vanda's changes are taking effect. This to me is the model classroom that we were talking about last year and we've achieved it here with this, the teachers who are in here working together. You see a lot of adult support, there's a lot of adults working with them and all very focused activities and over here led by the teacher. Now, this is the best we've had it yet so I, I think it's important for us to see this because it wasn't like this last year, there was little bits of it wasn't there. It's not like this in every early years classroom but this one's really lovely as you can see. As the school is still in a cause for concern, Vanda's approach is being carefully monitored by the Learning Trust. But while these methods are still so new to her teachers, she doesn't want experts to come to school and confuse the issue with conflicting advice. We have a lot of consultant support. And there's a fine line between support and, and feeling completely overwhelmed. So we're, we're monitoring that a bit closely. Yes, we welcome all the support, but sometimes you can have so much support that you don't actually want it. <laughs> Consultants from the Hackney Learning Trust are attending the school on a regular basis. Just showing Penny, who's our early years specialist from the Learning Trust, um, exactly what we're doing here. We're, we're being a bit sort of defensive about this, so I hope she's, she's going to work with us. But unless it fits into what we're doing, I don't want the support and I don't want interventions in reception year one because they're not ready for interventions. It's ridiculous. Vanda does not want formal teaching in the early years and she's determined that her approach won't be watered down. But I don't really care what the government says if it doesn't fit in with what we're doing. But you know, because this is good practice, isn't it? In this classroom, this yeah. is good practice. Yeah. I mean, it will be in line and more yeah. than the government yeah. is actually talking about. Yeah. And I think that's already happening here. If we go, to, let's go to another classroom, and you'll see it isn't happening there. And then maybe that's where we can use your input. We are being monitored, understandably, because the Learning Trust's accountable as I am. But we'll show them it works. It's been another tough term for Vanda, with money worries, staff absences, and frequent observations from the Learning Trust. Vanda has taken massive strides forward, but she still has a long way to go. It is a challenge, because I like to think that I'm not really too, my husband would laugh, that I'm not really too bossy and domineering, but I'm really, I'm having to be quite, I think some people are thinking I'm quite mean. I don't think I'm actually being mean. I'm, I'm setting very high standards. And I have to set high standards. And, and, and all the different layers, not just the teachers. Some people are not enjoying that quite so much. You know, we've had a few run-ins with catering and with the school keepers. And with... But I'm winning. I'm getting my way, which is what I need to turn the school around. School's back after the half-term break. Vanda has now been head teacher at Daubney for 13 months. She hasn't got a jacket to go to the trip, so she's borrowing my coat. There you are, that's fine, isn't it? Well, it sleeves up, it'll be fine. It is waterproof. It's waterproof and it's got a hood, <laughs> all right? And if you fall over and get it muddy, I don't care. Now smile. Is it your birthday? There you are, then. Go and have a lovely time, all right? Well done for coming to me. So you can now go. You look very elegant. You might need to tie the back up for her. It's, you know, there's two things hanging down. <laughs> Oh, poor darling. That was funny, wasn't it? They're going to Mably Green to do tree sculpture. <laughs> but there's obviously an issue. The teacher's not happy they're not wearing appropriate uh, 
But then the letters didn't go out yesterday. It's all to do with the personal, personality conflict between the two teachers who were going. And I had intended to haul them in and tell them to be good role models before they go. And I haven't had time to do that. So I guess when they come back, they'll be at loggerheads, but we'll see. Yeah, okay. But Dominique's fine. So I'll go out this way then. All right. Then. And you'll, you'll find the supply, yeah? Yeah. OK. I'm still constantly saying to people, I'm spending too much time on dealing with staff I have to train, staff who are being difficult, staff who are on long-term sick, and my focus should be much more on the children. At one of her regular leadership meetings, Vanda expresses her frustration that staff aren't taking the initiative when it comes to routine work, like maintaining assessment data. I found out yesterday that um, Target Tracker isn't loaded onto lots of people's machines and they can't access it. So I'm going to sort that out. It's just when you talk to somebody, so well, you can do your target tracker. Oh no, it doesn't work. I just, th I, th I think this is this is when I'd put leadership style. I am, I'm getting increasingly frustrated, as I think you three are, but this week, by by people's lack of initiative. The, the thing that as if we're running around, sort of doing making mundane decisions that they should be making. And what I said to, I think, two of you yesterday was we have all got to be incredibly tough. And I mean quite cold in one sense, because, because I think, not with everybody, but with those certain people, we've reached a point where, it, I, I think, quite honestly, it's taking the, um, well, it's taking the mickey, isn't it? They're just, it's not the right attitude. It's appalling. And it's I think what's really dragging me down personally is that now it's been over 12 months of my dealing with HR personnel issues. And when I count them up, there's been 15 serious personnel issues to deal with, in which are, some of which are still ongoing, over half of which are still ongoing. And I'm into my second year here at Daubney, and I just sometimes think, when am I going to be able to focus solely on these children? Yeah. And where did he kick you? Got a bruise. Do you know who it was? Over 50% of my time is still stuck in that office in meetings with unions and HR or having to do letters around people on capabilities or long term sick. And they're aware of that, the Learning Trust, but it's reaching a point where I'm thinking, good heavens, I need, I need a permanent HR advisor here. It's incredibly wearing. They didn't know the local press have got hold of and run a story about a teacher at Daubney. Vanda was hoping to be able to deal with the incident quietly, and the stress is mounting now it's publicised. With so much work to do in the school, the last thing Vanda wants is to be spending more time dealing with the wrong kind of media interest. Well, that's, that makes the situation different, because parents now will... Uh, oh, parents of the children in that class. Can I keep it? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sue. The Learning Trust uh, will help us. Hmm. Never a dull moment. Line up now, the whistle's gone. China, line up. When Vanda took over as head teacher at Daubney, the last head and many of the staff had been with the school for more than 20 years. Is this a reason for some of the continuing staff problems? If the school had gone into special measures or had become a fresh start school, in a way you would have wiped the slates clean. That didn't happen, so I've come into the equivalent of a... This is a school that could so easily, as I said before, have gone into special measures, or as my advisor said this week, have had, a, have had a fresh start, and it hasn't. So that means I'm trying to turn around a school where I still... When I came, and I've still got some of them here, I've got staff who shouldn't be here. And I'm just going to have to persevere and keep on until I've got the staff that these children deserve. At the beginning of November, Vanda is still working incredibly hard and pushing her team to their limits to make a difference to the school's performance before Christmas. The pressure is more acute because every decision is being monitored by the Learning Trust. Today, Steve Belk, the Director of Standards from the Learning Trust, is visiting to see for himself whether Vanda is managing to lead the school forward. At the moment, we have a very good relationship with the Learning Trust. And I say at the moment because I think any head's very aware that you, you can change just like that if things don't go according to plan. But certainly at the moment, the support we're getting 
isn't too intrusive it, and it's, it's, we can cope with it. I think it's a fine line again though, if, if, it, if there was much more I think I'd be saying, no, no, back off. Yeah, but, and also the school row I wanted to mention to you, that we're, we're sort of going over the 75 per year group. And I'm, I'm wondering what will happen in the future. Okay, we're going okay. to... Stay on the and jump, go. Look at this! But going in classrooms now, you are seeing a much better learning environment. You are seeing much better teaching. We're going to do some classroom observations, formal ones this week with my school improvement officer. And I'm really hopeful that, that we'll get some goods. I mean, I was showing one of the assistant directors around this morning, um, and he said, you need goods and not satisfactories, and that's true. I mean, we, we could scrape by with some satisfactories last year, but it's beyond that now. A whole year on, we need to be getting good and excellence in, in, in the teaching now. Well, Miss Allen will be saying, where's Mrs. Noakes? To combat the school's poor standards in teaching, Vanda's already heavy workload is increased, as she needs to be routinely observing lessons to make sure her planning is being put properly into practice. Sorry, this young lady was with me, that's why she's late. I do apologise. And we're late for yours, come on, quick. Quick, 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 quick. In we go. I'm going to sit on this orange chair. Oh, thank you. Denise Allen is a newly qualified teacher, working with the Year One class. Fireworks are very beautiful, and fireworks make lots of lovely noises, but... I'm sorry to say, fireworks can also be very dangerous. Now, we're going to do this work in our blue book, and I want you to talk to the person sitting next to you, and I want you to tell them what your poster with a beautiful picture of a firework, of fireworks on it is going to look like. Immediate thoughts of the environment is much better. The lesson, I was surprised it seemed a bit formal. And I, I was looking at my watch to think, OK, 15 minutes on the carpet, that's more than long enough. But it's certainly not an inadequate. I mean, it is, it's certainly satisfactory, yeah. One of the things we've been saying to the teachers, though, is that, that we're putting pressure on you is because the Learning Trust advisors are putting pressure on us. And we needed the staff to realise that we don't just sit on our backsides in the office. We're under just as much pressure as them. I think that's quite an important thing for them to realise. It just looks a mess. It's awful. And they I didn't clear up after their um, assembly either, which I was a bit disappointed in. Which assembly is that? That was last well, week before. Um, Look at all this. Half term. I say some of this. Yeah, is it's the thing that makes me despair about this place. It's so messy. Yes, can you... a messy hall may not seem like an issue, but with the weeks passing and another learning trust review scheduled, it is more than Vander wants to deal with. The principal problems still facing Vanda 14 months into the job are unresolved, serious staffing issues. Um, quite frankly, I'm not prepared to go through another year. I'm sure you're not, like we've just been through. No. Enough's enough, and I think... It's been tough, hasn't it, this mm. week? I think for our own sanity, and certainly your health, and for the children as well. Enough. We've had a year of that. That's what makes me despair. I mean, I, I actually said to Andy, I felt I could have... This, this, this doesn't sound like inspirational leadership because you've all filled in your MPQHs, but I felt I could have walked away this week if it wasn't for all of you because you just reached a point where it's all so awful, isn't it? And, of course, I'm not going to walk away, but you, I f felt that despairing at times. That at a routine meeting of the family care team, Vanda has another problem to announce. I have to just tell you the bad news about... And I know I'm really gutted about it, but I couldn't balance, balance the budget, so I'm having to lose both the therapists. And also the fact that we've now got this project and all your therapists, I can't go to the governors and yeah. have a deficit budget because I'm employing two extra ones. Mm -hmm. So somehow your therapists are going to have to fill the gap for those two lovely, lovely ladies. Yeah, it's a huge loss. I know it is. Yeah, I mean, I just heard just before, so I'm just kind of still digesting it. It's a real shame because of the work that they were doing in school and the relationships they've built up. Mm. But... I, no one could feel more awful than I, than I do, and that's the one part of the job that I really hate when you have to do things like that. Mm. All I can hope is somehow we'll get some more funding. Mm. The relentless and mounting pressures of the term so far have pushed Vanda beyond her limits. She's been under constant review, 
has had to cope with issues arising from staffing problems and react to the unexpected dramas that arise on a daily basis in schools. The seemingly endless battle of transforming Daubney from a failing school to a success story has left Vanda exhausted and her health is suffering again. Vanda had a bit of a health scare and as we were travelling on the train, um, we, um, I'd met up with her at Stratford Station and we ended up in hospital. Not me, but obviously she uh, had some chest pains and had some tests and various other bits and pieces done. General consensus of opinion was that it might just be stress. Uh, I can't imagine where that might come from, doing this job. But she's, she's well enough. Um, you can see at the end of a busy week, and certainly the weeks recently have been very busy, it really does take its toll. I hadn't been well and I had to have check that my heart was okay, so I had a treadmill test, which I thought I'd die on that. My heart is fine, which is great, but I'd had all that stress because I was taken ill. And then coming straight back into quite a lot of problems because I hadn't been here the week before. Um, and it's staffing problems. It's still staffing problems. It's still personnel issues. I had one day this week when I had the school improvement officer here for six hours, which, you know, I keep saying she's supportive but challenging, and, and she is supportive, but, you know, you're pretty worn out at the end of six hours of intense sort of what are you doing, how are you transforming it. it it's been a tough week, you yeah. There are encouraging signs that Vanda's ambitious plans for Daubney are paying off. And on a tour of the classrooms, Vanda is delighted to find children working creatively on the whole school African theme. These look like feathers, don't they? They're amazing. Whose idea was that? Miss. Miss Shahina? The whole class is. Hello, Miss Thomas. Hello, you all right? Are these going to be masks by any chance? Yeah. Are these... Yes. Are we going to be able to put these up and put them on our faces? Yes. Do I look beautiful? Yes. Well, they must be magic masks then, that's all I can say. In the latter part of the autumn term, the school has a third and final review led by the Learning Trust. Vanda is delighted with the results. I think I can smile when I talk about the reviews now. We had our first review last January when the outcome was the equivalent of like special, special measures. And then in June there was some improvement. But, uh, and this time I was anxious. I think perhaps you're more anxious when you're really close to it. And it, it, it was a good outcome. I mean, there is still loads and loads to do, but whereas we had lots of key issues before, we've only got one key issue, which is teaching and learning, which I would agree with. And they felt that, you know, if were we to have an Ofsted now, we would hopefully get satisfactory and hopefully not even get the notice to improve. We had two outstanding lessons, one very good, the rest was satisfactory, and there were just a smattering of inadequates, nothing like what it was in January and June. And, you know, the, the credit to the staff who really worked. One of the classes awarded an excellent in the review is led by Stacey Haynes, an early years instructor. She has an innovative approach to her teaching, and today's lesson is science. Now she's primed the children, they're absolutely on tenterhooks, they can't wait, but they haven't seen, some of them have never seen a real cat at such close proximity. What do you think he's got on his face? Jordan. He's got some whiskers. 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 He's got bones. He's got bones. What does he feel like? He's liking that. Just what does his fur feel like? Do you have fur? I have hair. You have hair, you have fine hairs on your skin, don't you? But do you look like the cat? Do you have fur like the cat? No. All over your body? He's not got the, no. he's not got the same hair. He hasn't got the same hair as Haisha, has he? He's not got the same hair. This is a perfect example, and this is one of many. This is something that goes on continually. This isn't a sort of a one-off lesson for Ofsted. This is practice that we do week in, week out. This is what we expect in every early years class in Daubeny now. Good. Well, so you're going to let him play with us? Oh, I don't know, because if that door opens, he will run, and then I'll lose my cat. The plans for the nurture group have come together, and Daubeny School now has a brand new class, the Starlight class, with just 10 pupils. 
they are actually learning. There's children there who haven't really learned for the last two to three years. And because they're now in the right environment, they're actually starting to get excited about their learning, which is the main objective. When you open something like this, which is a very special class for children who have certain needs, it's like the tip of the iceberg. Once we'd opened and, and we got the 10 children in, we suddenly kept discovering other children who could benefit from that. I still haven't got funding for that, and if I don't get funding for it, I'm going to have a deficit budget. But I felt so passionately that I needed it that, that I've taken the gamble because that's the way I tend to operate. Hopefully we'll get the funding. The term's African theme has been building towards this completely transformed classroom. We're sitting in a rainforest. This, this um, what you can see around you, was put together by um, all the children from years two to six, really to show the creative approach we're taking to the curriculum. And it's a mixture of science and art. And I think what, what it's ended up with is, is a room where the children can come in and have a real sensory experience. Lots of lovely posters up here. You made the ladybird, didn't you? I think we all know that you don't learn if you're bored. And we've started actually discussing pedagogy with the staff. You know, we've been putting in systems, telling them what to do in a very pedantic way. But now we've actually reached a stage where we're actually beginning to discuss pedagogy. Thank God, I thought, at last. And, and one of the things we said to them when they were in groups was, you know, what, what is good teaching? And, it, and they, they can tell me, you know, good teaching is when you're inspirational, you're effective, you're creative, you're imaginative. You know, and a lot of them haven't been that. They, they, been quite dull and I would hope that things like this are starting to resurrect the feeling that they yes they want to teach there's a joy in imparting the knowledge and if they don't feel that then then those who still don't feel that will realize well, well why am I here why am I teaching teachers should they be here the reception build has taken six weeks and disrupted work at the school but the enhanced security makes it worth it so this will be the reception area and then there will be two security doors there which again you can only get through with a swipe so where's the security was dreadful I mean it will really be tighter now and parents can come in with buggies can't they and sit down instead of going up those stairs and and this tomb like room is mine I think it's a bit like a prison cell but maybe when it's painted the sink's coming out <laughs> I'm not that inspired by it I must admit but we're furnishing it on a shoestring because there's hardly any money, so we're just mixing and matching the furniture we've got and we'll get some plants and things. Because we're hoping to do the whole thing for, I think it's £60,000. So I'm pleased, that looks all right. Don't look, if they've really thrown out, I'd rather you just said they're thrown out. They're thrown out. It's nearly the end of term and I Vanda is planning the Christingle service, but there's a problem. Where are the children's angel wings? All right, I'll tell her to liaise with you. Thank you, Dave. All right, bye. No, you know, you know what he's there. done? That, that f***'s thrown them out, hasn't he? Really? Because he, 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 he said, I'll go and look for them. I said, don't go and don't do it. It's yeah. a waste of time. So they've obviously thrown them out. All Same. that work. It's I could... Lovely. can't believe it. Down. 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 Joseph and Mary. All right, just you keep the back row for me, you lot. Angels, you need to be in front of the musicians. Quentin, hold that stick. Oh, we're going to brighten up Hackney today. You look marvellous. Roberto, Savinda's still being dressed. Friends and parents of Daubney have joined the pupils and staff at St Barnabas Church on Homerton High Street for the school's Christmas show. Good girl. It was so nice to see such a big turnout. A lot more um, than we had last year. And I think what's particularly lovely is we had a lot more Muslim children taking part with their parents' approval, which I think is just, just lovely. It's really important, isn't it? It's what we're about. Okay. 
I only got about um, four Christmas cards last year and I've had about, I don't know, not 400, but a lot more um, this year because the kids know me. Not from the grown-ups, I should say, but at least from the children. So after 15 months in the job and with improved results, does Vanda feel she's been successful this term? It's 100% better than it was 15 months ago. The children are happier, and I've said that before. You can see when you walk around, they're happier. You know, they want to hug you, they want to talk to you, they want to show you what they've been learning that morning. So, so we're getting there. We're much further on, I think, than I sometimes give uh, everyone credit for. It's easy to be negative, isn't it, when, when you're struggling knee-deep through it all, but we're getting there.